Brian, what do you, what do you think um, benefits for, for consumers and businesses? You've certainly touched on it, but what do you think some of the key benefits are for, for edge computing? Yeah, so I'll start with consumers and then we'll talk businesses. Um, okay. So I think for a consumer, one of the benefits are is just a better user experience across the devices that you'll have in your home. Uh, if we think of a home, we've got everything from our Alexa, which is a relatively, um, it puts low demand on our network, uh, all the way out to our uh, kids are doing AR and VR gaming, or even just any gaming where latency is a concern. And mm -hmm. edge compute is going to enable some really neat use cases. If I could go back to gaming for a second, mm -hmm. uh, if you could get down to sub one millisecond or even sub five millisecond gaming, wow. that's going nice. to enable an entirely new uh, uh, industry for gaming and even cloud-based gaming, right? Google wow. is getting into cloud-based gaming now. Mm -hmm. Microsoft right. is getting into cloud-based gaming. We might not have that console that, you know, that, we, that we're using for gaming much longer. It might mm -hmm. all be done between Edge doing the, the low latency stuff and mm -hmm. like we talked about early on, cloud then doing some of the heavier lifting and right. we can play these amazing games without needing a $500, $400 box hooked to our TV. So, and, and, and Edge is going to be the, the empowerer of that. And even where containers are going with Edge, that is what allows that, that Edge device to run a different application based on what that neighborhood or what that Edge is uh, the demand for it at the time. So it like, might like be Kuber, from 3 Kuber p.m. Nutty. to- Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I think I think containers and edge is where it gets really interesting because now that edge device becomes a, a platform for whatever is in need at that time. So if you think 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. kids come home, they pop up Fortnite. Boom, let's stand up a local server in the neighborhood. All the kids have this awesome low latency experience. Right. Kids go to bed or maybe the teenagers or parents are streaming Netflix. Now, all of a sudden, there's a huge uh, demand. If you think of Stranger Things when that came out, it was amazing the percentage of the total Netflix traffic that was a few episodes <laughs> of Stranger Things. Well, right. you'll cache that, right? They'd love right. to be able to store that file right on, a, right on a little edge device somewhere in the neighborhood, right? So right. that they're delivering it just over the neighborhood uh, WAN rather than pulling the entire Stranger Things video down from the center data center ever, for every consumer, which sucks right. up a ton of bandwidth, right? right? So as a user, but you're getting faster experience, a better experience. Uh, consumer thinks uh, that this just is a cool experience, right? And we could does go into security. Does and caching require uh, Kubernetes and containers for, for, for caching? I wouldn't say it requires it. Right. I would say what Kubernetes and containers will give us is the ability to reuse that edge device, that hardware, based on whatever the need is of it at the okay. time very quickly. Gotcha. Right. So it right. Might, yep. that edge device might be running a, a Fortnite or cloud gaming server one second, and then it might be a, a caching engine or a CDN the next. And it might be running a, a security slice to, to bifurcate or split off all our IoT traffic. Right, right, using containers to do that. So you can you can really start to stand up and instantiate, build and tear down services mm -hmm. very quickly mm -hmm. with the container on that edge device. So, uh, so that's so, consumers. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right, but what about business benef is a totally benefits right. for businesses? Yeah, for, I, I, benefits yeah. Of, of edge computing for businesses, what, what would you say some of the key ones are? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest ones is it's going to enable a business to buy new services from that, whoever has that edge device. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times it'll be a service provider, right? It might be your local cable or telco operator. Um, and you'll be able to very quickly instantiate security services. You'll be able to quickly set up network slicing so that if I think of, let's take a factory, for example, that has some uh, IoT devices that are unimportant and maybe some IoT devices that are very important, right? Uh -huh. You might have an uh, Alexa or a, a connected toaster in the break room, but you also probably have some robotics in that factory. Those are both IoT, but they're very different types of IoT. Right. Hospitals, same thing. You know, CT and imaging machines are considered IoT, right? Which is insane, hmm. right? So if you need an MRI, that's considered an IoT device. But huh. you would want that treated very differently on your network uh, than your toaster. Uh, so right, being right. able, again, I, I think that network slicing you said, the ability to, to split up uh, workloads based on demand is a great benefit for a business. 
uh, and, and Edge will deliver that. And then there's the lower latency. Some use cases really benefit even for a business from very low latency and hauling all the way back to a cloud data center is always going to be more latency than running that use case right there at the edge. Mm -hmm.